What's up, y'all? My name is Omar. This is my co-host, Tunde. Today, we will be without our co-host and partner, Daniel, who is the man, the myth, the legend with the ever-famous and popular street beef breakdowns. Um, so today, we want to welcome you to our show, where we'll be exploring uh, a, new, a new story today. Today, we have two special guests. Um, and if for those of you who have been following Street Beefs and who know the history of Street Beefs, you know that Street Beefs is a platform for folks, for anyone to be able to squash beef that might have started in the street, but they can be squashed in a controlled environment. And so today, we are very fortunate and very honored to have two Street Beef fighters who have you taken advantage of the street beef platform to squash a beef that took place. Uh, so today, we want to welcome Kilo and Darkness to Harden the Fight. Welcome, Kilo. Welcome, How's Darkness. How guys? How's How it going? going? Good, man. How are you? How are you all? Doing pretty yeah. good. I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm just enjoying my Sunday with my dogs, just chilling. <laughs> What's your dog's name, Kilo? This is Cash. Cash Money Carino. Cash <laughs> <laughs> Money. That's what's up. That's a bulldog, right? It's a French bulldog. French bulldog. Nice. All right, y'all. Well, welcome, Cash. Welcome, y'all. Um, so, again, so as we said in the intro, today's show is really uh, a special one for me, at least. This is the first time that in Harden the Fight, we are going to be exploring a little bit about how street beefs goes about creating a platform for fighters or anyone really to be able to squash real tension real beef that um that might have happened outside of the ring and so i wanted to uh give you both an opportunity to take us back to that beginning right take us to the genesis of um how you all came to use street beefs as a platform to squash this beef Right. And so for those of you who um, who may not know, um, Kilo and Darkness both recently had a fight and this fight wasn't a typical fight. There wasn't a winner or loser. This fight was meant to squash a beef. And so I wanted to start off with you, Kilo, if you can if you can just walk us through uh, what do you remember? What actually how did this beef start? I believe it started at. Um Street Beats was Coast 3, where um, he fought Bezo, and um, there was an argument, and he was yelling, uh, oh, like, I'll make you, like, like, you fight me, I'll make you famous, and I, I started yelling, Bezo, 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 Bezo. so I, I was like, yeah, right, motherfucker, I started talking shit, you know what I mean, like, I do, that's me, bro, you know what I mean, I'm always talking shit, and uh, I started talking shit, and, um, we pretty much said, oh, yeah, we will. We can handle out the next event. And um, so, you know what I mean? We did. <laughs> Darkness, I want to go to you. How, how do you remember that? So now you've heard you've heard Kilo's <laughs> side of the story. Is that how you remember it? Or was well, it a little bit different? Well, it's almost about the same. I think it was a fight after uh, me and Diesel. It was towards our, like the last second of the fight. I know when I was getting up and I ended up throwing a knee. And it was like controversy because of that. And then Kilo was like, oh, I remember someone yelled, oh, you can't do that to me. And I saw Kilo right there yelling, but I didn't know if it was him that yelled. And I remember my argument just started with him. When I got out of the ring, me and him kind of got in each other's face. And I was like, you know, if you want to do this, we could do this right now or whatever. And everybody was trying to separate us. And I, it's weird because it went from me and Diesel's fight to me and Kilo. And then everybody was just hyping it up more like, oh, yeah, let him fight, let him fight. And I was like, no, nah, if I fight you, and I did say that, I was like, if I fight you, I'm going to make you famous. And Kilo was like, oh, yeah, let's let's do this, let's do this. But Kilo already had a fight set up for that day. So they were like, you know, no, y'all got to separate. And I think it was later on the talks when they were like, you know, everybody was there at the event at SB3. And they were like, you and Kilo almost got into it in the crowd. So we're going to have to set up this B fight. Tell me a little bit more about that, Kilo. What, what was it like to walk away from that? scenario from that situation knowing that you could potentially be fighting darkness inside the cage at some later at some later date what was that like for you no uh, the, the biggest thing was some some six foot like 300 pound hawaiian dude came up to me and was like you gotta fucking stop this shit 
<laughs> and I was like, I do not want problems with this big ass motherfucker. <laughs> that dude was huge. <laughs> I was like, all right, all right, I'm like, let it go, bro. Like, I don't want to get one. I don't want to get kicked out too. I don't want problems with this big ass motherfucker right here. <laughs> Shout out to Savage, man. Salute <laughs> to uh, making sure that this didn't happen outside of the ring. He was huge, bro. I'm like, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Darkness. Yeah. I'll go to you. What was it like for you to, you know, be in that heated exchange outside of the ring, mm-hmm. having just fought Diesel, and then knowing that probably potentially later on in the future, you would probably be making Kilo famous. How was that? You know, what, you know what's funny is I think it was SB1. Me and Kilo first met each other. We were looking at looking for like our different opponents. And I think that day Kilo said to me, he was like, oh, yeah, we said what weight class we're in. He was like, you know, we're going to fight each other one day. And I thought it was funny that because I know we're in the same weight class. I was like, yeah, it'll happen. We're probably way down in the future. But to see that it happened at SB3, I was just like, man, that was pretty fast. But also the fact that I went to Vegas by myself, my team couldn't make it. And to see Kilo had like a crowd with him and me being as small as I am, I remember, I think he had like two bigger dudes. He had White Lightning with him. And I just saw White Lightning knock out someone. So I'm like, oh, man, I'm walking over here to a danger zone. So I'm just like, you know what, this happens right now. But then I remember Savage coming over him, stepping in between me and Kilo, and I remember him just grabbing me, and he was like, come on, you got to go outside till you cool down. And I was like, well, I'm not going to fight this giant bear right here, but <laughs> everything cooled down. We, I think we ended up going back inside. I met up with Kilo. You know, the heat of the moment, in the mixture, we're all fighters. When you got that adrenaline rushing, no matter what is said, it's going to burst into something else. You got the crowd hyping up. Me and Kilo met that day. And I was like, you know, everything got over our head. And I was like, you know, if you still want to sell us, we could do it. And he was like, yeah, I'm down for it. So that was a cool part right there. But we didn't think it was going to happen so fast. Mm. And so, and that's a very interesting thing. So you guys were in communication after the, the event that caused you all to like technically well, B and B. You all were in communication with each other, right? Yeah, but there's also a lot of us like back and forth talking shit to each other, mainly. Yeah, <laughs> it, went, it, it, it exploded. It exploded from the event. To, we ended up, I think, it ended up happening on Facebook, on the group wall, and everybody. That's when everybody started noticing more and more, and, and everyone started calling out like, "We need to have Kilo versus Darkness. We need to have Darkness versus Kilo." And they're like, "It's just going off." And I think Martin and Alex reached out to both of us, and they were like, "Guys, you guys gotta calm this down here on every every comment going at it with each other." And so, was there any point or any opportunity where y'all were just like, look, let's settle this outside of the ring. Like, I made a mistake. I was full of adrenaline. Was there any attempt at that before getting to the the ring? No, I think in the mixture of us both being fighters, even that day, I think Kilo even said he was like, he was like, oh, we can go right now. And I was like, let's go. Let's go in the ring. And they were like, nah, 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 because I just got there fighting Vizo. And then Kilo was getting ready for his opponent. And they're like, yeah, we got to calm this down right now. But outside the ring, I think it was more because we're both sportsmen. I think it would have been better for us inside the ring than it would have been outside. I don't think we would have had the same respect for sure. outside. For mm. sure. I actually want to touch on that really quick, right? That's an interesting point you bring up, Darkness. All of us here can raise your hand if somebody asked us the question, right? Who has seen a fight, you know, outside on the streets, right? Who who has witnessed the fight or who has been in a fight, right? And what was that like? Did you ever did you ever come to be able to squash that beef, right? We also know how a potential fist fight or a physical confrontation can lead to much more dire, much more devastating and violent situations. Like it could escalate really quickly, right? And people end up getting really hurt. So can you all just touch a little bit on how how street beefs has been able to to address that, like be able to create a safe space, a controlled environment for folks to squash beef. What are your thoughts on that? And how important is it to have a platform like street beefs where folks can actually use that as an avenue to squash real tension, real beef? And, and you know, whoever, whoever can go, anyone. It's, it's crazy because uh, about two years ago, one of my best friends, uh, he got stabbed over $25 worth of drugs. And uh, he lost his life, one of my very good friends, in a parking garage, over 25 fucking dollars worth of drugs. 
You know what I mean? It, it's crazy. And what happened was, it was they they started fist fighting. My homeboy was on top of the dude in full mount. Dude was on bottom, getting getting beat up. Pulls a knife out, stabs my homeboy from the bottom, rolls him off, and hops in his car, and drives away. He got caught. He's in jail for it. But my homie still lost his life. And like, I feel like there's a place if they knew about something like that, a safe spot where they could settle it, or he didn't have an opportunity to pull a knife. I'd probably still have my friend today. You know. Mm. Not only that, the 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 individual who did the stabbing, he was who's now who you have said is now in jail. He's yeah. someone's son, someone's brother, so maybe someone's uncle, yeah. or partner. And so yeah. now they 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 have, you know, lost someone too. I I could imagine that if this individual sitting in jail right now and they would give him an opportunity say, hey, you either have the opportunity to go in jail for murdering somebody for twenty five dollars with the drugs or selling that like two men inside of a cage, which one would you choose? Exactly. Darkness, what about you? What, what are your thoughts on, on, on this topic of being able to have street beefs as a safe space, a controlled environment to squash beefs? How important is that? I think, to me, I think, you know, this is perfect that they're doing something like this because we all know in the streets. I know Kilo's, I'm like, I'm going to say these way, Kilo's hood, I'm hood. You know, everybody's been in the hood and stuff. We all come from poverty. And we know a beef in the street, if we get in a fight, me and Kilo would have gotten a fight in the street. We know what have escalated more and more. Plus, we're both MMA fighters. You can't be technical on a street fight. You're going to go ahead and go for go for all. And no matter who win or lose, you're still going to have the beef. I like the fact that street beefs have, you know, no matter be whatever happens, win or lose, however this fight goes, you guys squash it. Just, just get the fighting out of your system. I think that mattered the most because nowadays you don't get that a lot. Like even back in the day in high school or school and stuff, if you get in a fight, you know, people will tease you about it. People will say stuff. and it just wouldn't end. I like the fact that after this, you know, it could be in a controlled substance in a cage. There's a time limit that, you know, there's, there's a ref there, you know, things can go however way. And then at the end of it, which I find is really, I know a lot of people complained about it on, uh, on internet or comments and stuff, but the fact that they judge no winner kind of ends a beef right there because in my mind, I'm not going to lie to you in my mind, Kilo won. But in the fact that they pronounce it and saying that, Hey, it ended with, no beef, no, nobody win. It leaves at a clean slate that you don't have to put your mind like, oh no, he still beat me, so I'm gonna go back and you know this beef is still on. Like now, nah, the beef is done. It happened. However, the result ended. However, you did. It's done. And I like that factor more than anything because that's just squash it all right there. Eventually, eventually, I know for a fact. Now the beef is done. Me and Kilo are still in the same weight class, so eventually we are gonna meet again. Kilo is more likely running from the t- going for the title. So mm-hmm. I know somewhere up in that line when he does snag it, because there's some game opponents that are just now joining, but when he snags it, you know there's still that ladder right there. You're going to be following along. So we'll eventually meet again, but it's better not in a beef fight because now we know the beef between us is dead, and it's just all respect now. No but respect, brother. And, that, and that's interesting. So and let, let me be transparent with y'all. I'm not – I'm new to fighting. I would say I'm a casual casual. Like, I'm casually casual. <laughs> <laughs> When when I, I'm hearing that there was no decision, in my mind, I'm like, huh? What is that? How does, who, why did we fight? And so, uh, Darkness, I really appreciate you saying that. Keela, I would love to hear your perspective on how the B fights don't have a winner or a loser. Like, I feel like there is a winner or a loser. It's just not announced. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Okay. Like he said, the whole point of a beef fight is to squash the beef. Gotcha. So if if someone if, if someone's like, oh, he won, someone's someone's gonna feel some type of way about it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like uh, someone's gonna feel some type of way about it and be like, oh, oh, he he won, he won. He said, I I still want my revenge. You know what I mean? I, I want my vengeance. You know what I mean? And fighters, that's how we are, bro. We don't like to get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because someone beats us, we want our we want we 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 want we want to run twos. Shit, he beats me a second time. I want threes. Until, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna keep fighting the motherfucker until I win. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I'll go ahead today. Leading up to the fight, was that like communicated to y'all? Like the the there is no winner. There's just a squash beat. Yeah. Was that communicated clearly? 
You know, I don't think that was. I know in the beginning they wrote to this and hey, after you guys fight, this beef is over. I think it, I don't think we. I didn't find out till the day of the fight, or I didn't know it was gonna be. There was no winner. I know I've seen the beef fights before with OG Street beefs, and I was like, okay, you know, they kind of have winners and losers. But I didn't know till the day of, and they're like, there's not gonna be a winner in this fight, and I was like, all right, so. You know, I guess that leaves it okay. That leaves the controversy ending there. But it's however they, it's however it wanted to go. But if you really look at it, you know, I think from me and Kilo's perspective, knowing that we both are fighters, we both can say in our mind, like, all right, we know he won. I think if you have like two people that didn't fight before and that had like a crazy little beef, you really wanted to end it, doesn't get on the streets, that would be something for it. But between me and Kilo, I know we, at the end of that fight, we got up, we hung each other, and I know we both looked each other in the eyes, and, they, and just the eye language would be like, you know I won, right? And I saw <laughs> Kilo's eyes, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, you can, you can kind of leave it at that. I love it. So uh, let's point out two things. One, that uh, Kilo said yadada, which we know he's from Northern <laughs> California. And he's second, that both of y'all are extremely competitive, um, which is – fascinating right because it does leave question given that you are both in the same weight category uh what can happen in the future and so we're going to touch on that a uh, little bit down the line how does one go about using street beefs as a platform to be able to address uh some real tension in, in a controlled and environment right so how so talk to the to the viewers out there if this, someone out there who's watching this right now knows somebody that they just cannot stand, that they they like, man, I really want to hurt this individual, but I'm fearful that if I do that, it can go really bad. How can they reach out? Who can they reach out to? How can they go about using Street Biz as a platform to squash his beef? Um, yeah, man. First off, I tell them, man, please don't handle it in the streets. Someone could get seriously hurt. Someone could lose their lives. I've done seen it with my eyes, man. And someone could, someone could lose their their father, their son. Someone, someone who's somebody to somebody. So please handle it in a controlled environment. Y'all can message me, uh, Kilo Carino, on Facebook. Um, I, I can point you guys in the right direction. If not me, Martin Rubio or Christopher Wilmore. We're all on Instagram, Facebook. You know what I mean? Most social media platforms you can find us, and uh, we could all help you guys set up a beef fight. What would you say, uh, Darkness, to, uh, to folks out there who are watching this and, again, you know, who um, – who maybe have questions who want to who want to take care of it but you know don't know how i would say it's the same thing like we have facebook platforms we have instagram street beast is out there this it's not hard to find you can find the pages you know try to get talk to that person and let any of the run like anybody that's running it know like hey i got a beef with this person i want to sell it in you guys yard i think it's the best way to do that because you don't got to worry about going to jail. You don't got to worry about murdering somebody. You, you guys can squash it right there. And then, trust me, no beef out there is worth doing time for. It's, 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 if it's something that you can simply settle by signing a contract, signing some paper and saying, hey, I can end this right here and then, and boom, then ending it in the street, getting arrested by the cops. Now you got a fine. You got jail time. You got all these things that's not really worth it, all because of some simple beef. And nowadays, you know, the beefs, I've been hearing of like beefs over girls, beefs over relationships, beefs over drugs, beefs over money. It's like, is $20, is $10, is $100 really worth, what, five to six years mm. of your life being behind bars or who knows, even life. So my, my best thing to say is Instagram. You, all of us fighters, you can easily find any of us. You can look up Melito Marti, you can look up Darkness, look us up on Instagram, Facebook. Find anybody and say, hey, I want to try to get, even if you have to comment on the Street Beef's YouTube pages, comment on it like, hey, I got a beef with someone, how do I, we all read our comments, we all read the comments, somebody will get back to you real quick, like, hey, you, this is the connect, this is the link, join mm -hmm. here, let them know your issue. Mm -hmm. there you, you said something really important, uh, Darkness, and I just want to highlight that, man. You said, no beef is worth jail time. And when you think of it, like that and you think of like the the ramifications of like what this could potentially be if it's not in a controlled environment 
jail time, death, you know, something happening to somebody you love. It really is infantile. Like, it, it really is just like, mm, I really don't want to fight you. <laughs> I think it's the greater context of it. And, and so I, I really I appreciate the way that you just said that, like, is it jail or is it, you know, not going to jail? Not going to jail. That's my choice. <laughs> yeah. Not worth it, man. <laughs> Well, I certainly appreciate both of y'all for that message. Um, and there you have it, folks. If you are out there watching this and you are feeling stuck, you are feeling afraid, or you're feeling froggy, you want to jump, right? You're feeling hyphy in the words of, of Kilo, <laughs> right? Um, do the, take advantage of this Street Beat platform and reach out to Kilo, reach out to Darkness, right? Reach out to the Street Beef community on Instagram, on Facebook, and set your, do yourself a favor, do your family a favor, do all the folks who really love you and support you want to see you out here healthy and safe and reach out to them and set that, set that uh, beef match up. All right. Ain't nothing to it, but to do it. All right, y'all. So now we are going to get into some recap. I don't know if y'all are excited, but I certainly am. We know uh, at Hard in the Fight, we have our fight breakdowns. But today is going to be special because we have two exciting fighters who are going to be walking us through what took place at their beef match. All right. So let's get into it. We'll go back to you. So like this, coming out of San Francisco, California. I want to give a shout out to my girl, Karina, my kids, everybody, Black Flag Kickbox. Remember, I was so focused. I didn't even say nothing to the camera. I pushed the camera out of my face. <laughs> as a as a man, get out of here! Like I'm, I'm focused, bro. Like I ain't saying shit. <laughs> and, and so, Darkness, what was your approach coming into uh, the street beats and, and doing your intro? I, I noticed, and and let me just say this because again, I, I'm new to this. Um, that the intros are definitely an art form. Like mm. Some people are just like, nope, I don't, I don't say anything. I'm getting focused, and then other people like. They shout out people. Uh, I know Shinigami did a really elaborate <laughs> show. <laughs> Some boy yeah. shouted everybody out but his mailman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was, a hi- that, that was the highlight of it all right there, him shouting out everybody. <laughs> but I think for me, is I think the first two Street Beast fights, I was like kind of nervous. I didn't know what to say, who to shout out or anything. So this time I was like, you know, let me just go with what I can, what's coming up in my head real quick, just shout that out real quick. But I was expecting Kilo to do a shout out. And when I saw they moved the camera for him so quick, it was just like, okay. I was like, all right. And then plus that day, if you can see what I was wearing, I was expecting it to be really cold and it got really hot that day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we'll see if this leads into anything in, uh, in the fight. Get over it. All right, Street Beats. We got Steve Max going. We're going to end it right here. We're going to end it right here. This corner, we got darkness. This corner, we got Kilo. All right, Street Beast West Coast, let's get it, let's go. Come here, very good, put your hands down. All right, gentlemen, this is some beef, all right? You know what you gotta do. All right, so y'all are in each other's face after, you know, however many days, months, y'all have been talking smack to each other over the internet. Y'all are like inches away from each other at this point. What's what's going through y'all's heads? Um, I'm like, I was in like a super, super like a uh, flow state. If y'all know anything about psychology, sure. I, mean, I, I was straight in a flow state, man. I, got, I, I blacked out during my fight. After the fight, I asked my girl, I was like, do we win? She, she said, oh, yeah, yeah. She, 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 she said, you got him. I'm like, oh, okay. Fuck. Hey, Bert, can you elaborate on that a little bit? What, in your own words, what is it? Uh, what it, what is a flow state, or describe what it feels like to be in a flow state? For me, when I'm in a flow state, I completely black out, and just reaction takes over. You know what I mean? When I'm in a flow state, it's when you don't have to think at all, and that's when your training completely takes over. You know what I mean? And your body is just reaction, is just purely reacting. You know what I mean? You're not thinking about anything you're doing. Your your body and your mind is all one, and it's just simply reacting off of your training. And so is that something that, like, is it kind of like flight, flight or fight? Does it get activated in certain modes, or are you in control 
of activating? Um, no, um, you activate it. You know what I mean? Like, um, I put I, I put myself in a certain psyche before my fights. You know what I mean? And which pretty much activates my flow mode. Um, I, I'm really into psychology. You know what I mean? I took psychology in school, so um, I, I try to uh, put my psych psychology knowledge into my training, and I, I try to make them go one on one. You know. Mm -hmm. What about you, Darkness? What was going? What was going in your on your head? I think for me, before any fight, it's kind of I wouldn't say it's like his flow state, but I get complete tunnel vision. I couldn't hear the crowd. I couldn't hear the ref. When I'm standing in front of my opponent's face, it's just me and my opponent right there. And all I see is him. I didn't see the cage. I didn't see nothing else. I just saw him, completely just him. And that was my main focus. Like, I couldn't hear people saying darkness. I couldn't hear people saying kilo. Until I watched the video, I was like, oh, wow, people are saying darkness. And I couldn't even know. I didn't even hear, to be honest with you, I didn't hear the ref. I just remember staring at his face, and we both staring at each other, and I'm waiting like for them to say start, like we need to hear the bell. This needs to go. Mm. 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 Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens when the bell rings. It took yourself a long time to beat my gun, man. Come on, for a long time. You ready, sir? You ready, sir? Touch with if you want. Let's get busy. Let's dance. Let's, go. let's pause it there real quick. Again. Just want to make a quick note that that even like, even though there was beef, like both of y'all agreed to 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 touch gloves. Shout out to y'all for that. That was that was honorable too. All right, we can keep rolling. Just want to make that. I want to pause it here. Um, uh, is is Kilo here? Kilo, are you back? <laughs> <laughs> Kilo, want to go ahead push ups. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm taking a mad piss. Go for it, go for it. And so, Kilo, you look like you started off as if you wanted to strike. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I always want to strike, dog. <laughs> what was your game plan? Talk to me. I wanted to boss with him, bro. I, I, mean, I wanted to punch him. I wanted to punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, darkness. You understood? Did you know that he was gonna pop? Like, what was your approach? Because you look like you were. You know what? Tackling my. My approach really wasn't. It was, you know, get him. Like, in the beginning, I was like, you know, Kilo's a striker. I know if we go to, like, the first round, get him off his feet. Get him used to being off his feet, and then we can strike in the second round. But as soon as it started, I was like, you know, rush him, go for the takedown, get him to the floor. Because I've already seen what his kicks and stuff can do to people. And I'm like, you know, measuring it up, I was like, okay, me and Kilo are about the same height. But he is a little bit faster in getting them kicks off the floor. So I was like, just as soon as it starts, rush it to his corner, get him to the ground. Do what I can. Mm -hmm. One I thing I wanna, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Darkness. I didn't want to stand there and try to trade in the beginning of the round because that's gonna, that can wear and tear right there, right yeah. in the beginning. You want to change his focus. And, and it's interesting because one of the things that I noticed is that both of y'all are wearing Muay Thai shorts, right? So are both of y'all uh, both of y'all trained uh, in Muay Thai? Yeah. Yes, sir. My my main tradition is my main two arts I train is Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. And see, for me, my main my main was more like Muay Thai, and then I did a, like a lot of karate, and then wrestling and Jiu Jitsu has started to become a little bit newer to me now. Mm. Yeah, a, a lot of people think I'm just a striker, but no, I've been doing. I actually I started doing Jiu Jitsu before I did Muay Thai, and in high school I was a TOC wrestling champion, so. I have a very good under, understanding about of the ground. I, a lot of people don't realize they think I'm just a striker because I, I choose to strike a lot in my fights just because I like to I like to strike. You know what I mean? Just because I don't mean I don't know shit on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> We've certainly seen a lot of a lot of uh, ground game in this in this matchup. So let's get to see some more. Brace that cage, brace that cage. So let's stop there. Let's stop there. <laughs> yeah, let's pause right there because see, to 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 the casuals, to the casual casuals. Sweet, sweet. Right. See, I don't think, Go ahead. I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody saw that, but I felt it. Like that cage is something different. That dirt in the middle of that roll when we were going, when we when I got him on the floor. I know from jujitsu from a real quick that 
he knew what he was doing. The moment he saw my leg, he grabbed the knee bar. <laughs> and I was like, oh, nope, got to get out of this. As soon as he, yeah, he, he grabbed that a pretty tight grip, but I had to yuck my foot out of that knee bar. Because that would have ended the fight right there. Yup. It, it's it's funny. You can, you can tell how much my girl knows about fighting because the first person you, you hear yelling knee bar is my girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, that your, was that your part? Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, that's my shoddy, bro. <laughs> that's awesome. Yo, so, so I'm a, go ahead. Go ahead, Tunde. I'm going to go back a little bit just so we Well, can... while you go back, I, I'm curious, though, Kilo. So we heard, we heard Darkness, right, just now say that, he, that you grabbed it. It was pretty tight. Now, in your mind, were you using, because when I was watching this, right, I thought that you grabbed it with the intentions of using it as a sort of a sweep or a way to get off of your back. So, uh, so that, that, so what that's called, it's called an, it's called an ankle sweep. Mm. Most people use an ankle sweep and they transition to a knee bar or, or a heel hook. You know what I mean? Which would, or a toe or a toe holder, which would be like the three common um, submissions that you would do from that position. You know what I mean, so it, you could go to either or, but in order to go to those positions, you have to do an ankle sweep. My intention was just to ankle sweep to get on my feet so I could strike with him. Got it. Perfect. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so I, I'm replaying it again because I, I want to make sure that we we're covering or we're, we're we're getting coverage of the technicality. Oh, maybe we can forward a little bit. Actually, no, no, this is where it's going to come up. My bad, my bad. This is the... The <laughs> crazy fist about to come up in a little bit, but um, here it's just a hand fight. Yeah, but it, but it, it, I could already see in your mind, Kilo. It, you were looking at the back. Like, were you already thinking take his back at this point? Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. So so let's go ahead and hit play. See, uh, my thing was I was trying to squeeze between the fence and him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. And, and darkness, did you? Yeah. Did the fence affect you in any way? Because you, you spent a, a good portion of this hold uh, going up against the, the steel or whatever. Hey, that, that fence, it's, it's not really the body that affects. It's right there against you. If you see my foot right there by the dirt and the toes, oh, my God, right there's the part where it starts to hurt because you're trying to dig in. But I think the main thing that everybody don't focus right there is if you hear someone yell out, I think it was Kilo's brother, somebody yelled out, wrist control. What everybody don't see right there is me and Kilo are actually trying to fight for each other's wrist. Because he's trying to get wrist control on me, and I'm sitting there trying to pull it off. But it's so tucked in there, you really can't see that's where we're going. Everybody's like, oh, you guys are just holding each other. I was no, like, no, you guys can fight, see bro. Huh? We're both fighting for position. Yep. That's what everybody don't see. They don't see stuff like that. They think, oh, it's just two guys holding each other. Like, you don't know how much it hurts to sit right there and try to hey, not my get thing is like, My thing is, like, I love Sh I love Shrek. He's a great guy, but he's he keeps saying, Oh, I need more action. I need more action. Bro, we're sitting there fighting for control. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because it, it actually comes up later in the fight as well. So I'm curious. I'm glad you bring that up. It's a good point. And, and just to, to also know, I'm curious if you all would agree with this, right? Because for, for, for folks who watch, you know, UFC, Bellator, you know, some of these other fights or, or Street Beasts, right? If, you, if you're into mixed martial arts and you hear oftentimes people say they're fighting for position. And to add to that, right, that fighting for that position, it's important because it leads to the next position, right? You need to gain that control in order to go to your next move, right? A lot of people yeah. might ignore that setup and try to go straight into the move and then it puts them in bad positions, right? That's why, that's why my jiu-jitsu coach always says position before submission. Because mm. in order to gain the submission, you have to make sure you have a good position. Mm. There you go. All right, let's keep it rolling. I use your government name, Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, my legs locked up. Oh, take it back. So, I think we know what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Harkness, uh, tell me what's going on. My, neck, well, my neck still hurts from this shit. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> you got on his back like uh, Luke, like Yoda did Luke Skywalker. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro, I'm hella weak, bro. <laughs> And so, uh, Darkness, what was going through your head at this point? Because this is definitely, I, I'm, I'm definitely casual, but this doesn't look like a conventional hold. <laughs> See, with, with that was, I'm like, a lot of dudes I trade, like, when I was trading, you just see a lot of dudes would get on my back, and I'm always wondering in my head, like, if I were to just flip and throw it, my coach would always say, if you do that, you're going to hurt the both of you, you probably knock each other out. And when Kilo got on my back, the only thing in my head was thinking, like, you know what? We said we're going to put on a show. I said, Miguel is do or die. If I stay up in this position, he's going to lock this choke. I'm going to go flat out. And I said, I, in my mind, I think I had like a three millisecond. I was like, either you do this move or you don't. And I'm like, what's all I can think in my head was do it and just see what happens from there. But I knew in my mind, I was, in my mind, my mind, I was arguing with myself like, this is some crazy shit. Don't do it. Don't do it. And next thing I knew, I was just like, let's go. <laughs> so. Go ahead, Tunde. It, it, it's funny that you say that you were in your head about it because it looked like you took some thought into it. <laughs> it looked <laughs> like you, you were doing a systems check in your head, like, do I have the, the energy to flip? Is my legs okay? Because uh, you, so you, you were leaning on the gate and he was slowly worming his way to the top of your back and you, it looked literally like you were like, I'm, I'm gonna flip. <laughs> yeah. um, I had to look, I had to look down. If you see in the video right here, I'm looking down like, there's dirt and rocks and stuff, and I'm like, this is probably going to hurt. Either both of us might get knocked out, but I'm looking down thinking, like, is there a soft spot? And I'm like, no. My, I can be honest with my first intentions. My first intentions, I was, I kind of looked up, and I was like, what if I just run forward into the gate? <laughs> you put your head down. <laughs> Yo, so – that okay, so a lot we hear a lot right um, about in fighting right that it's it's more mental and psychological than it is physical. I don't know. I, there's a, probably some folks who are watching and be like, "Oh, this is a percentage." I don't know what the percentage, is. but we know that it's more mental than it is physical. And so darkness, just hearing you talk about it, and, and you know, Tunde said, "I love how Tunde put it." He was like, "You're doing a systems check, right? You're doing a systems yeah. check, going like." like analyzing risk <laughs> doing all these things right so talk to us in your like how were you able to sort of control your thoughts or put any like doubt away because this is applicable to life right when we go through yeah. life and we're just doubting things like pulling really hesitant to pull the trigger you were able to find something within you to pull the trigger to pull this next one that we yeah haven't even watched but in the setup of this next move, what did it take for you to pull the trigger on what we're about to watch? In my mind, I, I always grew up with a different mindset that said, don't live life in the what if. Mm. Like, I don't ever want to live what if, like, what if I would have did it? What if I would have did this? Like, you have that moment right there. Like, I think I did that even when I was a kid. Like, everyone would say, like, you know, you see a girl and you're like, oh, she's real beautiful. Maybe I should go talk to her. And your friend's like, nah, you're out of her league. What's the worst that can happen? She's going to deny me? Oh, well, she's going to accept me. So in my mind, right there in that millisecond, I was thinking, what's the worst that can happen for me doing this? We either both can get knocked out or he can just get knocked out or whatever's going to happen. But I would rather know that I did it than not do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get to it. One minute left. Yeah! 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 So let me play it back because honestly, that was that was pretty epic. That was pretty epic. <laughs> so he takes it back. Got two more cuts. Here we go. Y'all fighting for control. Looks like he has control. Here we go. All right, so let's pause. So now we heard from Darkness Kilo. What went through your mind when you're up in the air flipping like that? Something told me just to go with it, man. Mm, but did you expect anything like that? Or what did you... I mean, bro, that shit caught me hella off guard, bro. I, I, was, I, I was like, holy fuck, did he just do a somersault? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, something told me to just to tuck my neck and like roll with him. I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, bro, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a pretty smart person, so like, I know physics. I know what happens when you go against a force. 
uh, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, just go with the force and go and keep the momentum and you should be all right. <laughs> yeah. And, and what we know is that darkness, to your credit, like it worked. Like you were able to get his hooks off, right? So you did this yeah. super unconventional move, right? That even your, your professors had told you do not do. You did it <laughs> and you were able to get the hooks off, get, but we know later in the video, we know that um, ultimately he regains the back control. Um, but at least for this, for this moment, it worked. It well, actually what surprised me the most was after, like in my mind, after doing that move, I knew, uh, to this day, I think to me, I'm like, anybody else, if it wasn't someone like Kilo, I think anybody else, they would have let go, they would have got hurt. But I was just surprised that when I got back up off the floor from the roll, he was still holding on. If you can see when you pause in the video, he's holding on, and I, in my mind, I'm like, why is he still holding Like, in my mind, I'm thinking, he's still holding on, dear Lord. I'm like, God dang it. <laughs> Kilo, what, what, uh, what level uh, belt are you in jiu-jitsu, if you, if you don't mind me asking? Um, blue. Blue, okay. Well, that that is certainly a uh, high level oh. high IQ right there, right? The the having the intuition to hold on, right? As 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 uh, Darkness said, like you were still holding on. Um that was that was pretty impressive. And so uh so where are we at? So we'll go ahead and, and roll the footage. One minute left. Highlight really cool. This, this, at this point, you can see, like, why you can see on his face. So, Darkness said, Why are you still holding on to me? At this point, you literally can see Darkness saying that in his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's getting up, like, Why are you still attached to me? Here, you look like you're in trouble, Darkness. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, right here. Hilo had locked, he, tried, he was locking in a choke, but it wasn't the fact that him just locking in that choke. If you look at Kilo right there, my face is getting shoved into the dirt, so I'm, it's hard to breathe with the dirt in my nose and in my mouth, and I'm trying to stop him from choking me, but I'm also chewing on rocks and dirt. Yo, you and know, just, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. No, I, I was going to say to that point, you know, in obviously – you know, uh, in professional mixed martial arts in UFC or Bellator, it's a, it's a ring, right? Uh, yeah. Nice, beautiful canvas. But when, when you think about, when you think about like Olympic sports, you have volleyball that can be in a ring, in a, in a indoor ring, right? Or not ring, but what am I talking about? Volleyball could be played indoor in a gym, right? Or hardwood floor, or it could be done in a beach. Soccer, the same thing. In soccer and Olympic sports, they have Olympic soccer, which is on grass. But then they also have soccer on fast floor, right? The the on like the tennis court kind of floor, and also on sand. So this is a beautiful thing that like you get to see MMA, uh, mixed martial arts, and combat sports on this sand sand uh, cage. And so, so darkness. Not only were you fighting off a choke, but you were also trying to breathe through the sand being put inside your your mouth and nose. Yep, the environment. <laughs> environment. I love the environment, bro. I love the street abuse environment. I think it's fucking sick. Mm. I think I think to be honest, with you it does make you a tougher fighter because like you can say like now I think from this point right here going into the cage from right here is like bro I've had it worse and I've had dirt in my face I mean, a mat in your face won't do so much compared to just like, the aggression of the environment. Fighting in street beefs makes fighting in the cage a luxury. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Bars. Okay, so let's see. Let's see how you get out of this hole. All right, so let's pause it there. So a little bit of controversy here. Um, there's two things that there were a little bit of controversial in this in this in this move right here, in this uh, scenario. So one is obviously the, the shots to the back of the head. Uh, so we'll get into that. But then the second one that we'll see in a minute is where the ref repositioned, repositioned y'all. Um, so yeah. wanted to see if, let's start with you, Darkness. What's going through your head right now? So you're, you know, obviously he took your back and he, he, he abandoned the choke and went into the strikes. Um, Initially, the strikes looked legal. They were to the side of the head, but then he's, you start to see the, the, the elbows go down in the 90 degree to the back of the head. What, what was going through your head? 
I think it was the heat of the fight. Like I, I in my mind, I don't know if he, I don't think he really meant to throw him to the back head, but I know three shots from the elbows went co- completely back to in the back of like my spine right there. And then I was like, I blacked out, like I blacked out for like a quick second and got dazed. And mm-hmm. then I remember if you see when you get up in the video, I thought he might have choked me out. I didn't even know the back of the shots happened. But he, we end up standing up, and you can see Kilo still has this choke in, and I'm still sitting there having dirt and everything. The choke is still tight on my face. So I thought, okay, he choked me out. But then, no, that's when I was like, no, you took three shots in the back of the head. I think right here, Shrek put me off to the corner, and what everybody didn't see on the sidelines, they were about to call the fight. Because Shrek was like, no, your eyes are not together. You have a concussion. And I was like, no, this is a beef fight. Like, you know, me and Kilo trained for this. I'm not going to go out there and – let something this simple stop our fight. Like, I don't care if I'm dazed or whatever. We're going to continue this fight. And he was like, well, then this is on your own accord. And I'm like, well, well, let's go. I'm like, you know, that's the one thing I have respect for with Kilo is like, we're fighters. No matter what, nobody wants to end a fight because of a broken toe, a slight concussion. Trust me, I can guarantee you in our line of work, we've had multiple concussions. Even in sparring, you've had concussions and you try to teach your body to pull through it. Mm. You don't want to be that person to rob somebody of their fight like that. Like, nobody wants to go in there and be robbed of their fight. Like, oh, well, this fight ended because the judges stopped it. Like, no. it The win is nice, but you don't want the fight stopped. So, Kilo, what what were your thoughts? Were, what was your head? I mean, were you tr- – what were you aiming for? Um, and do you agree that these were illegal blows to the back of the head? I, I, well, I was aiming for the crown of the head. The crown is right around, like, where you'd put a crown. And sometimes when you throw elbows, that shit slips as you're throwing it, you know what I mean? And that's beyond my control. So, but would you agree with the stoppage at this point? Um, yeah, you know what I mean? Because sometimes, like I said, it's beyond my control. If I missed, you know what I mean? For sure. It's, it's like shooting a gun at target practice. You're not going to hit the bullseye every time, you know? Right. So then, okay, so let's go forward. So, Oz, I, I, I was curious about this. I mean, do y'all feel like it should have been, um, like, repositioned? Or because it were illegal blows, was it fair to stand you both up in, in, in this position? I, I think because they're illegal blows is the reason why they reset it. I feel like they should have reset it, like, uh, where, where, I had him, where I had him up against the fence. But, you know what I mean? It's up to the ref's decision, so whatever he thought was the right decision was obviously the right decision. Fair enough. Pause real quick. Sorry, I know I keep. I'm like, I'm like details over there because it was a guillotine right there. But I thought you had it in tight. Was it tight? What uh, was it a guillotine or did why did you abandon that? He's really good at fighting with hands. Mm. You know what I mean? I kept trying to get a guillotine, but he he was really good at um fighting my hands and not letting me get that gable grip connection or that S grip connection. Mm. Got it. Was it tight? I'm gonna give. I'm going to give credit to somebody that helped me with the jiu-jitsu that came into the gym and, you know, kept doing the same thing, guillotine and everything with me. Shinigami came all the way down, started working with me a bit. And his jiu-jitsu, like, you know, with someone with bigger hands, it was, like, hard trying to get him not to choke me. And I, I just thought to myself, like, you know what? Guillotine is the number one move all MMA fighters go for, no matter what. Whenever you duck your head right there, they're going to go for a guillotine. And right here, I think I'm holding his leg between my thighs. And I know if he were to try to go for a guillotine, my best option was to fight those hands. And then if you see, 
I started like tenderizing the thigh because that's the same leg I saw him use to kick me. So I'm like, you know, if I tenderize his leg, it's going to come up again. But I was really sitting there trying to fight those hands because once his back was against that cage, I was like, okay, he can lock this choke in. And, and so uh, can, I want to ask, why did you decide to lock his, his leg between your thighs? Um, because from, from my point of view, it doesn't look advantageous. It looked like you were putting yourself in an a interesting position. And so, I, you know, just to get into your head while you were here, why did you decide to lock it, his left in his thigh? If you notice in the video, when I decided to lock his thigh, him trying to see his mind's going to, your mind's going to have to be focused on, his mind was trying to be focused on getting that choking. But once I got his thigh, his mind also has to be focused on trying to pull that th that leg from underneath him. If you see in the video, he's trying to pull it away. But also while he's focusing on that, that's when I'm working my hands trying to get rid of that grip because your body's going to put most of his energy to one thing. If you try to transfer it somewhere else, it's going to release some energy from somewhere. Mm. So that at me locking his leg was a little bit able for me to get his hands to fight that grip because he was more, he was also focused on, if you, in, you can't see in the video, but between my leg, you could feel his muscle tensing and him trying to pull his leg away. And then he also got to work on his balance. So go back. Go. Let's just let's just start it right there. Go ahead, Miguelito. Or Dark. Yeah, I think there's a part right here that's crucial where he's sitting there, and I think I'm taking knees to the head or taking knees. Yep. And the ref yells out, "I need more work." And I'm thinking in my head while I'm getting hit, like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> I'm getting knee. <laughs> yeah, right there, he caught me with a really good knee to the to the eye. Hmm. Now I know how that feels because I'm normally the guy locking people up, throwing knees, and I was like, you know, I've never really been knee, and he caught me with a good one. He kept going for them chokes. <laughs> I'm an opportunist, you know? Well, there's certainly, to this point, there's certainly a point, it, it seems like, you know, you've already mentioned that you love to strike, right? And even though you have a background in jujitsu and wrestling, you love to strike, and that's going to be your 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 go to, right? You you want to knock, you want to go for the knockout. But it seemed as the fight progressed that you became really comfortable. Like it's almost like you know, okay, this is going to be a, a match that we're going to fight pretty close. There's not, there's not going to be a whole lot of separation. And it, was there a moment where you just decided to pivot? you know and say hey you know what we're gonna make this more of a grappling match the opportunities are there and did you feel you had an advantage um in the grappling department yeah pretty much after i like after like our first like grappling exchange i felt like i was the more experienced grappler and the more technical grappler you know what i mean because um after like seeing him with d-zone stuff I, I was like oh he knows how to grapple and stuff okay and after I experienced his grappling myself, I was like, oh, okay, like, he's not as experienced as I thought he was. You know what I mean? I was, and so I started, I started capitalizing on it. Darkness, what are your thoughts to that? How do, what, are you, what are your reactions to that? Uh, to be honest with you, I feel like that fight, uh, Kilo actually did shock me because I was more, even for Daniel Castillo's, like, breakdown, I was expecting more. Like, I was like, you know, he know he, I know he knows some grappling, but we never got to see it mm. because all his fights were stand-up. But after the first round, I was like, oh, okay, he has grappling skills. And I I knew it had to have been way better than mine. But in my mind, I was thinking, like, well, I was still shocked because I'm like, man, Kilo just pushed him. I was kind of happy it happened because it kind of showed everybody in our fight that, hey, Kilo isn't just a stand-up guy. I pushed him to make him use his grappling. I pushed him to make him use his jujitsu, so that way, you know, we can finally see the Kilo full package. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was just stuck on, oh, Kilo can throw head kicks and stuff, but no, like I, like I even told Diesel, like, when I fight someone, win or lose, I want to bring out their full potential and show everybody, like, this is what this person has. Like, I don't, I know if I would have stood there and stand with Kilo, we could have had a stand-up war all day, but I wanted to bring out everything in him. Like, I wanted to push more into seeing what he's he got. Because I know somewhere, whether win or lose, somewhere down the future, now I know what to look for if I were to ever fight Kilo again, that, okay, you know, he's not a one-trick pony. Because I think 
everybody was more focused on that in our fight than anything. Like, oh, Kilo's just a Muay Thai guy. Kilo's just a Muay Thai guy. Darkness has this when it comes to the floor. Darkness has it with grappling. But this fight proved a lot different. It's still, it's still right now, it shocks me that, damn, Kilo was actually grappling using jiu-jitsu. Like, shit. <laughs> Even right here where he's grabbing his ankle. By the way, Darkness, thank you for the shout-out. For those of you who have not checked out the Hard in the Fight breakdowns by Daniel Castillo, go and subscribe and hit the like button but go definitely go check out the fight breakdown of kilo and darkness by our very own hard in the fight daniel castillo but let's roll let's keep rolling the tape you're trying to go for that uh, what was that what's that called when you triangle it was a triangle, but, but no, it was like you were locking, you lock up the arm, like you can go for, like where you going for Oma Plata. Plata. It looks like he was going for Oma Plata. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was just trying, I was trying to gain position so I could throw my, so I could throw my ankle over so I could go for Oma Plata. Oma Plata, got it. You see the the Diaz brothers uh, are, are always doing that one too. <sighs> they, I think Nick pulled it off in one of the fights. <sighs> he was able to get the choke like that. I've been submitting a lot of people that like it in jiu-jitsu and shit. Yeah, I think it's right there too. The ref was like, give me something, give me something. I'm sitting here thinking like me and Kilo are trying to fight for position. I'm trying to throw strikes. We're moving on this ground. Like, give you what? What more to give? That's right. I'm I'm like sitting there like transitioning, moving on my hips, switching from switching from guard to Switching to different guards, like I don't see how I wasn't active from the bottom. He's going for Kamora right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This uh, let's pause it there. So he get he stops y'all for inactivity. Obviously, he wanted to see more. Uh, let's see. Darkness, let's start with you. You were on top. You had the top control. What, what's going through your head right here? Did you agree with this? I kind of didn't agree with it because I felt like, you know, we both have been, like, we both know the MMA and stuff. Like, you know, we were still moving around. You only stand people up when it's a stalemate. You know, Kilo was still trying to get out. I was still moving position, trying to, like, free my hands to throw. And... I don't know. I feel like the stand-up right there probably was a little pointless because we were still working. But yeah. I think, you know, they wanted to see more stand-up. Let's just point out that refing and is one of the hardest jobs to do, right? And so, um, you know, shout-out to the refs for, for what they do, for sure. Um, and, you know, we don't always have to agree. So let's roll tape. Here, folks, it's calling out for the Darce. I just drive you right here. Those do not look like they should be. Those knees to the to the thigh. Let's pause right there. Uh, Darkness, were you surprised by that by that hip throw? Because he he was able to mount you relatively with ease. W- were you surprised or how? No, actually, yeah. actually, I wasn't surprised about the hip throw, and I knew when he started tenderizing my knees, like in Muay Thai, and I know Kilo can agree with me. In Muay Thai, I do that to a lot of the guys in my gym where I start knee throwing knees to their thighs because it tenderizes it and causes it to. Like, you know, at least be soft. And you know right after someone tenderizes your thighs, it's coming for a throw. And the way I was already, like, you know, a little bit tired. And when he started throwing the knees to the thighs, I was like, okay, he's not throwing to my body. I knew from at some point, I was like, I'm about to get hip tossed. But there was no other, re- like, your mind, the reaction happens so fast, your mind is just like, it's about to happen. And then, boom, it happens. I think you hear my corner of someone yell out, you better not get taken down. And I'm like, dude, he just hit me with not the night uh 
knees to the thigh, it's about to happen. There's no, like, there was no way for me to stop it. Once he tenderized my thighs, it was like, it's about to happen. And I knew Kilo had the tie takedowns, like the, the hip toss and stuff. Mm. And I think that's what his game plan was right there, because I know when I was against it, when he started throwing him to my thigh, I just knew a takedown was coming on after. Let's roll tape. To be honest with you, right here, I think Corey knew, like, if you could see my feet, I was trying to squeeze it up again to get back to that up position and probably go for a last one more of those flips. But I think at some part right here, Corey ends up stretching. He ends up seeing my leg and he stretched it out. For those that don't know, Corey is Kilo. There you have it. You already know that! The B fight, so there's, there's no winner, so we have. Good job, darkness. Good job, darkness. Final thoughts on this fight. What what are you taking away? What have you learned from from this from this fight with with each other? Um, I, I thought it was a great fight. Um, I thought um, darkness was a good test of my training and my abilities. Um, you know, um, I appreciate him, for, for, like you said, like, uh, bringing out the best fighter in me. So, you know, um, there's no doubts or, and there's no, um, regrets on my part, you know, I thought this was a great fight for both of us and a good fight that both of us could learn from. I'm going to say about the same thing. There's no regrets from this fight, you know, could have did better, but, I think in most part, it brought out something in the both of us. Within within me and Kilo, I really feel like, and I'm going to say this because even before leading up to our fight, I think a lot of the fighters in our division really wanted this fight to happen because a lot of them probably look up to me and Kilo as, okay, these guys are the most technical fighters in the West Coast Street Beach right now. In our weight class, I'm going to say it like that before I get everybody going crazy and stuff, but I think in our weight class, uh... But there's some newcomers that are starting to step it up and everything. But I think with the beef and everything, it ended in a good way. But I know down in the future, me and Kilo will meet again. We learn from it. And it just shows – I like the fact that they got to bring out more for everyone to see about Kilo and show that, you know, he's not a one-trick pony. He can work the ground game. He can – he got grappling. He got jujitsu, And it's like now it puts him as a force to be reckoned with. It's not just going to leave the fact that, okay, all I got to worry about is Kilo stand-up. So, you know, I give him much respect. It brought out a lot more respect from me, from my behalf, to Kilo than anything else. Like, I, my, my main thing has always been, even the fact of him taking that flip and still holding on to everything, that brought out a lot of resilience. I think the most, to be honest with you, the most that I had in this fight and I got to work on a little bit more was probably durability. Durability, I think if I didn't have the durability that I had, anybody else would have been lost against Kilo. And I think even at the last second of the last round, you know, that should, it ended in no, it ended in no, no winner, no loser. But in, in both our minds, we looked at each other. I think you could see it in the video. We looked at each other and we had that eye connection fighter to fighter. And it was like, you already know though, Miguel, you know I won. And I was like, I looked at him and I shook my head and I smiled. I think you see me pointing at him in the video, and I'm like, yeah, you won. Yeah, yeah. much respect, brother, much respect. That's just uh, the fighter in the both of us. Like, you know, after all this, it's still respect. But I'm going to issue this, and I'm going to make a statement. For anybody in me and Kilo's weight division, don't think because what you guys saw, that's the it. Like, it's going to be – you got two people to be reckoned with. Me and Kilo are still a force yes, to be reckoned with. I know everybody's I'm saying right now we got to worry about C2. But, you know, we're going to figure that out eventually. Yes, sir. So we want to, again, man, both of you all are just such great fighters, technical fighters, so much promise um, in your division. Uh, what's next for, for both of you? Um, whoever steps up to the plate, man, um, I, want, I want that 125. I want that 140 and under um, street belt, man. So. 
whoever steps in my way to get that belt, man, like, it's on. <laughs> I want that fucker. <laughs> so I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. I'll be right there following behind him. But I, like I said, after the kilo fight, it just made me more hungry. It made me more hungry. It taught me a lot more little things I got to work on. And for the newcomers that's coming, just know, like, it's not being taken lightly no more. Like, this is something we both want. And I think you guys got a – I think that's a Christmas gift. Me and Kilo fight with a Christmas gift earlier than proposed. But I know when it, when we do meet up again, it's going to be sparks are going to fly even worse than what it was before. No beef behind it, just all respect. So I think when you have two fighters – that's going to fight with all respect coming into another fight. It's going to be more technical, more sound. Just, I see him making his way up there, but I know I'm right behind there. I'm going to be following him. Yes, sir. Solid. And so, again, I just want to honor the, the beef that was squashed with that fight. Thank you all for coming to our show to, to discuss these things. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to wrap things up and take us out. So to the viewers, I want to say thank you for tuning in. I uh, hope you were able to gather some gems that you can apply to your own life. Uh, I know Darkness said some very powerful things. I know Kilo also said some very powerful things. So there's definitely some jewelry in this episode. Um, if you like what you saw and heard, show us some love by subscribing to the channel um, and donating some of your pocket change to our Patreon page so we can bring more content to you on a consistent basis. Yes, Until sir. Then, dig deep and double down on your commitments to yourself.